is Thursday, May 17th. This is the Hingham Historic Districts Commission. Thank you all for coming. Uh, first order of business tonight is um, if anyone has any conflicts with any of the agenda applications that are, that are on the agenda, um, let's just uh, talk about that now. I know that on the last one, uh, Kate Finnerty uh, used to be on this commission up until about a year ago. So I know we all we all know Kate and, and you know the application. She's doing some work in the back of the house. But if anybody feels that um, they're conflicted with this or with any of the other um, applications, now's a good time to talk about it. Mr. Chairman, um, Chris and Kate Finnerty bought um, Six ninety nine from uh, me and my wife, so I would feel it would be appropriate if uh, I recuse myself. Okay. Everyone else okay with? Um, yeah, I know it's a little bit difficult because you're still on the commission, but I feel like all of us can be impartial. At least I think I can. Mm -hmm. So, all right, great. Any other items? Um, of any concern? Okay. We are broadcasting tonight by uh, Harvard Media. Uh, recording and thank you very much for being here so with that let's just start with the uh, the first item uh, first application is uh, Richard Freyer is on am I pronouncing that correctly yes okay uh, to talk about uh, the demolition of a porch on 256 North Street and to replace it with a, a small landing yes thank you for coming in appreciate it thank you um, we all were out last uh, two weekends ago to uh, to take a look uh, to see what's going on with the porch, but if you want to just give us a uh, an update and what, what um, you feel this is going to en encompass and get us up to speed. Porch needs to be replaced. Yeah. Um, and it was interesting to hear some of the conversation before the meeting started about rain coming into the house. Because the porch has deteriorated, it now rains in my living room. I would like to have that stop. Um, we're told by the building department that the porch should come down. Um, it's also not in compliance with any building code in the town. It's too close to the street. Uh, the whole property is kind of out of whack with the building codes, but what they suggested was putting in a landing, which was probably initially the way the house was built. Um, we're looking at a four by six, one step landing off the front of the house. All right. I don't have anything else to... Okay. All right. Any questions from the audience? Uh, open up for discussion. I have a question, uh, Mr. Fair. Did you apply at any point in time for a Greenbush um, Trust Fund Preservation application? We... I know nothing about that. We bought the house nine years ago the people that owned it prior to us, my understanding is got a substantial amount of money from whether it was the MBTA or the trust or I don't know what happened and then they defaulted on the house. <coughs> so I, I, I don't know what's... It, it was the MBTA. It was um, the mitigation money that they paid out um, shortly after the train um, was resurrected in 2007. And that particular property qualified for, I think they used the money for um, windows. They, they did do some windows and they did some siding, but beyond that, I couldn't tell okay. you. It was, they didn't do much else. Yeah. Other comments? You know, I have one other um, comment, depending on which way. Um, uh, we vote, but I'll raise it now before the vote. Um, you know, um, in the Form B, there's some attention called to the porch and the distinctiveness that the um, porch adds to the house. And I can appreciate um, the comments about it being unsafe and so forth, but what might be, if it comes down, what might be um, important is to take some detailed pictures and some note the materials so that in the future, if somebody wanted to restore it um, and bring it back to that, it could be uh, it could be done with some detail that we customarily don't see because people don't keep these records so often. 
I'd be more than happy to take pictures, but I will tell you there is nothing about this house that is of any historic value. Um, this is kind of the house that Jack built prior to us buying it. It's, there, it's We've done a lot of interior work to fix things that were not done properly. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, certainly after seeing it, it's obvious that it needs to either be repaired or replaced mm -hmm. or taken down. I think the challenge then becomes what goes back when it comes down. Because sure. I think there's going to be a fair amount of work that's going to need to be done in order to sort of match up the siding. I think with that bay that comes out, you're going to have to put a roof Correct. on that. So I yep. think there's going to be a fair amount of work um, <clears throat> to do that. And, you know, regarding costs, I can't say whether that is more costly or less costly <laughs> than repairing the porch now. You know, I, I don't know if you've given either of those. I, I, we looked at the cost of repairing the porch. We looked at the cost of replacing the porch. And we looked at the cost of doing this. And honestly, I'm going for the least expensive option. Yeah. I just don't have the money to spend. We get prices as high as $25,000 to replace that porch. If someone wants to give me a loan, I'll replace it. Otherwise, I can't do it. What, oh, you asked about the trim on the corner boards? Right, the trim on the corner boards, I think, you know, around the corner, I think you've got trim up above. You have weaved shingles. I think thinking about how those things are going to kind of relate to each other once it's done. It, um, it will be fixed to look appropriately to the house. Um, we wouldn't want to have it any other way. This is this is a major investment for me, and um, I'm very lucky to live here. I was very lucky to purchase this house when I did. Um, the house has a lot of value, and quite frankly, it's my retirement, so I'm not going to mess with it. There's too much at stake, mm -hmm. but I need to I need to get this straightened out right away. Gotcha. Any other, um, any other major or minor uh, things that you, that you saw out there that needed attention if the uh, if the, the porch were to come down in terms of uh, so it'd be shoring, shoring it up and, and, and the main thing is just the protecting the interior and the water damage. Uh, the the corner board then would become a woven corner. The bay window would be an asphalt roof to match the existing structure. existing existing roof. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think what else there was. Is there a water table detail? No. I don't no. think there was. Okay. I, I, I think those would be the two main points, right? Just bringing, making sure you maintain the character and the details of, of the existing, mm -hmm. of the existing, the existing structure. Yeah, not a problem. <clears throat> Uh, just before we go forward, I should have done this before we started. Um, we need a fifth voting member um, on this. Ben, could you be could, yes. could you be the fifth, and could you also be the fifth for for tonight for the agenda items? Yes, if you're not conflicted on anything. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? to um, award the Certificate of Hardship on 256 North Street to remove the existing front porch and replace it with a four by six foot landing and also to make the other repairs um, necessary for, um, for the house to accommodate the porch being down, which I think was the uh, bay window and the corners. Shingling was determined to be the same as the, shing the shingles on the roof. Um, would you also like to include photographs of the existing in the motion? Yes. Yeah, please. We have enough detail there that um, in the um, as, as part of the conditions for you, Andrea. I think so. Okay. Do we have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 
Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. Good luck. Take care. All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, the New North Meeting House at 1 Lincoln Street. This is for the uh, construction of a of a uh, enlargement to the antenna that's currently up there. Um, so, uh, gentlemen, if you'd like to come forward and, and sit on the uh, here, that'd be great. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Good <coughs> well, my name is Ignacio from Also, This is Michael Dag from uh, We both work for Tower Resource Management and uh, we're site acquisition specialists. And uh, we have been contracted by Sprint to uh, ensure that their upgrades and their, their need for upgrade right now. Uh, this is an existing telecommunication facility. It actually has a base station, it has antennas. It has radio heads. Uh, it's all concealed within the church. And uh, the, only, the only exterior change that we're proposing here is, is expanding the existing flag post that's right on top of the steeple. Uh, we do need to expand it. Um, it's a little deceiving because it looks like we're expanding it twice the width, which we are. But when, when you look at it, it's, it's really only expanding about five inches on each side all the way around. Now keep in mind that this is 85 feet up in the air. Uh, we've also enclosed some uh, photo sims so that you can see the before and after. And uh, I purposely left them unmarked as far as before and after because there's such a slight deviation as far as from that distance to even notice the change. Uh, we, we've gone around and around trying to figure out how to modify the site so that it, it would be able to handle the new technology that's out there. And this is the, the best solution that we've been able to come up with as far as uh, making the change as, as least noticeable as possible. Uh, there's many other options. And like I said, we've, we've, we've considered them. You can put antennas by the columns uh, and hope that they're not seen, uh, but they're going to be seen. You have an open, an open base there where anything you put there is going to be noticeable. Uh, you can also put the antennas behind a, a, like a, a shroud, basically. You, you cover it, and all of a sudden they're going to be looking up at this church, and they're no longer going to see the sky through that opening. So um, this is really the only solution that we've seen so far that, that that will work. And as I said, I really don't believe that it's going to be noticed when it's 85 feet up in the air. We're not expanding the height in any way. We just need a little bit more room to get the newer antennas in there. And everything else is going to be done internally. Uh, and nobody will notice anything aesthetically from the outside of that of that facility. Uh, keep in mind that you know this this is good for the community. This is good for the church to, to keep up their church and, and, and to keep it in, in, in good condition. And um, you know that's where we're at right now. So if, if there's any questions or any ideas that you might want to throw out there as far as another way of doing it, I'll be more than happy to listen and and basically explain why I don't feel. You know, it, it might be better, or I'll tell you, it, it would be better, whatever the case may be. But that's, that's where we're at. Additional comments? Would you like to? I'm, I'm, uh, Come on up to the microphone. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, right, right here, Stan. Oh. My name's Craig Noble. I'm the uh, New North Meeting House uh, Parish Committee President. And we've gone round and round with Sprint on this. And um, and uh, Bill Thayer, I don't know, Bill Thayer used to sit on this board, is member of the member of our church. And he has been involved with it as well. He couldn't be here tonight. But <clears throat> we feel that this is the best solution uh, for the church. And it is very important for the maintenance of the meeting house. Um, we are a very small parish, and we have a lot of large bills, and we are running deficits. So the income from this uh, cell tower is very important to preserving this historic, um, beautiful piece of architecture. And <clears throat> so I've spent some time going up. I, I went up in the top of uh, um, where Central Street and Elm Street meet. And you can see it's a beautiful shot of the, uh, of the steeple. And you know when we first started talking about this, my first impression was, wow, 
that's going to be a lot bigger. And, and uh, when you go and actually look at it in perspective to the dome, it's very insignificant. And I think um, Dan's got some, some pictures of before and after here, and I think it'll be very unnoticeable. But it's, I just want to stress, very important for the income and maintenance of, of the meeting house. So we're trying to uh, do that, but also we, we, we do care about our building, and I think it's going to look, going to look pretty good. So. Thanks, Craig. Appreciate it. Open up for discussion. Who'd like to start? I have some questions. <clears throat> so there's, uh, it says existing, so you've got some um, antennas in there now. Yes, sir. And those get decommissioned. Yes, they will be removed. Is there a useful life to this particular, these, these products? Do they? There is really no telling in today's environment. The technology changes so quickly. Uh, the equipment is constantly being switched out. It's almost like, a, like what you would do with a light bulb in these sites because, like I said, as soon as they put the new technology up there, there's, there's newer technology coming out. There's more of a demand. The demand is, is increased tremendously. Everybody's doing everything on their phones. Right. So if we don't keep up with the technology and we don't keep these improvements up, that basically that site becomes uh, not, not use, useful anymore. And do you know how, how old the existing is? As far as how long it's been up there? Yeah. I think those ones maybe went in around 2011. Okay. Sometimes they do, though, back to your other question, they do repurpose the casings that are around them, depending on the, the condition when, you know, they get them out. Sometimes down the road they'll be able to, like, you know, retrofit the inside and use that, you know, the shell. Do we, do we have a record with the, with the spire had changed size back in 2011 when this went, yeah, went so in? I think it was, you're talking about the original antenna? The original antenna, I think, was, was mid-90s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And were there changes made to the size of the antenna? Uh, yeah, so it was a slightly uh, larger antenna. Yeah. Okay. And were there changes made to the size at that point? Uh, yeah, there was a, uh, the mast had to be, it was wooden mast, so they had to replace it uh, with a, uh, um, a knot or something that would pass through the, you know, the radio right. waves, right? And I think it was, a, it was slightly bigger uh, in circumference. I'm not sure exactly, maybe a couple inches. And, um, but they also had to do structural. Uh, Sprint came in and did structural. Uh, they actually repaired the structure of the steeple, probably about $80,000 or $60,000, if I remember right, of repairs to the um, uh, post and beam structure that holds that up. That needed to be done. And then they also reinforced the dome with steel inside the copper dome to support that that uh, uh, mast, and the mast was slightly bigger. And um, the the outer casing, what what is that made of? It's our friendly material. Usually, it's a, almost like a fiberglass type okay. material. What's the, uh, you said the diameter is approximately five times two, so 10 inches wider than the current diameter? Or what's yeah, the diameter? Yeah, that's on page, uh, page 06 or uh, yeah, page 06. You'll see right there, currently we're sitting at um, six inches across. What's the antenna? Uh, we're sitting at, I'm sorry. Um, it's hard for me to see here. Uh, 11, <laughs> 11, 11 inches across, and it's going to go to 22. So it's about a 10-inch uh, expansion. And that, that's what I was mentioning about that. It's not really 10. It's, it's five all the way around. What it is, is it, it's increasing the girth of the, of the mass itself. And the, um, the uh, columns that are holding the, uh, the dome up, are they roughly 11 now? Do you know what those, the diameter of those are? Columns? I... Do not have that measurement uh, at all. <coughs> no, I have uh, no measurements on the columns. The um, when the configuration, the current configuration in 2011 was put in, um, was there um, was there a size increase from the mid 90s with the original? No, this this mass was uh, the original one when they when they turn this into uh, the telecommunication facility. Okay. So this is this will be the, the first the yep. first time that that's done. Is there any um, air space within the the um, 
the flag post for use? No, it's real tight. Again, I'll address back to 06. If you look at that, um, that's basically how snug those antennas, the new ones, are going to be in there. They're going to be flush right up against the wall, and they're basically going to be touching each other all the way around. Uh, I mean, we, we went as, as small as we possibly could to uh, be able to fit these antennas. Okay. I mean, my, my, uh, the questions are just kind of leaning towards the proportionality of, of, of the, uh, the mass versus the columns. Um, what we have now you know, is in, in proportion. And then, you know, this, this, this adjustment, this new technology makes it a little top heavy. Um, so as far as you mean uh, the, the structure being able to support? Uh, no, not supporting. I'm um, just visually, visually, um, you know, doubling the diameter of uh, <coughs> of, um, of this antenna structure, the flag post versus what what you have on these. That looks like six. On page O, yeah, it's O six. I don't, I don't know. These are the, the columns around the perimeter of the yeah. dome. Correct. Yep. So. You know, there, there's, there's proportion now. I mean, they're all look like they're very close to the same diameter. And, um, you know, I know this is, we're looking up 85 feet, and this picture is, looks like it's taken from across the street. Um, but you can, I mean, you could definitely see it from, you know, this visual enhancement, looking up 85 feet from this vantage point. I mean, you'll agree with me on that, right? I mean, you could see the you can see the difference between where it is now. Oh, you can definitely see the difference. I mean, you're looking at a still picture. Um, yeah, you can definitely see the picture. I, I, my, my thought on this is, I mean, if, if, if somebody, they, they will notice a change, but I don't think there, it's going to be one of these things where it's, oh, my God, what is that? Um, uh, but from what you're saying, as far as the proportion, I mean, the only way around that would be to also increase the proportion of the columns. Uh, that would be the only solution to that. I, that I don't, we can't make this post any smaller than what we're proposing. So if, if there's going to be an issue with the, the way it, it, it looks against the columns, then the only solution that I can think of is then you would have to expand the columns. Uh, so then that proportion would look the same as it did before. Yeah. No, I think there's a proportionality with the columns, the dome, and the current antenna. I think there, there's a match there. I think they're they work together. There's some harmony there. Um, when you start to, you know, make an adjustment with the top, that's just my concern, is that this becomes, um, you know, this becomes, you know, top heavy for you, for as far as looks, of another as world. far as aesthetics is what you're referring to. Yes, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, if you say it's going to stand up there and it's going to, and it's oh, yeah, going to, we have all the. Uh, yeah, I believe you. Um, I'm just, you know, we're thinking of, or I'm thinking about it from an aesthetic point of view. You know if those, um, if the columns are hollow, and if they were, could you put the antennas in those columns instead of in the mast? Then you're you're talking about if the, the columns. If that's the case right now, from what we're discussing, those columns wouldn't be wide enough. We would have to make the columns wider to put the antennas in there. So <coughs> in that case, we'd have to make all the columns the same width. Which, for that matter, what if you put? Sorry, what if you put one antenna in each column? You would still have to make that column wider, and then now you're going to see It'd three wider columns and a lot more visible from the sh from the street on. Right, the columns yeah, are eleven me, inches. We, we yeah. thought <laughs> we're willing to do anything to be able to get these antennas on there, but as I said, we went around and around and around. We thought about, like I said, putting them behind the columns, but you'll be able to see them. There's just no way. Have you have you thought about bringing the antenna down into the dome? It looks like it's about the same height the, as the dome. The dome, then we would have to go ahead and replace that entire dome with RF friendly material. Then we're talking. So that it passes through. The old fiberglass, the whole yeah, dome. It would not be the same material by no means. Uh, it would have to be the RF friendly material that we would have to utilize. Even if on it's that. open below the dome? Yeah, it's open. I mean, you can, you, if you're standing below it, you can look up. So I wouldn't mean, it be able to pass? Wouldn't the waves be able to pass? No, through? no, because you got to understand if we put the antennas in the dome, uh, they're going to be pitched just, just to maybe get out a mile, two miles out. Uh, we can't we can't pitch them like this because it's just going to hit straight down to the ground. Okay. So yeah, they, they would have to be sitting up inside the dome as far up as we can go, and they would have to be pointing in three different directions. But to I cover think all I, I think I heard a suggestion of taking 
perhaps one of each of these sector elements and putting them in multiples of the columns supporting the dome. Perhaps you could even increase the number of antenna elements. Each column supporting the dome could have its own, I see three, three antenna elements in the, in the spire. What if you took, broke that up and put one of each of those three in three of the columns supporting the domes, or even put additional elements, one in, in every single one of those columns supporting the dome? There's two problems with the mounts. They would still, they would still stick out, the antennas themselves. And another thing is um, uh, the radio frequency engineers ha has this design at this height. So if you're dropping it down 20 feet, it might not, the site might not be viable for them anymore. Might propagate, not propagate correctly anymore when it's, when it's down there. Up where it is now, they're getting you know, the coverage they need. Mm -hmm. not, yeah. good, not really good coverage right now. It's decent, but they, with this, you know, uh, new antenna that they'll be up to the uh, the standards they want, but if they, you drop it down there, I think that it, the it's site might not be 20, usable for them. Twenty anyway. foot difference. Is yeah, it makes a difference. Even sometimes oh, yeah. five feet would make a huge difference for them. Yeah, you gotta, we got we got to clear tree lines, any, any any obstacles in the way. So that's why there's certain heights that that we have to sit at in order to make it feasible. As Michael was saying, if, if we did drop that down, uh, we'll probably be right at that tree line and we won't be able to get the distance out of those antennas that, that need to be there. Um, um, it, it, is it true that even if you were to be able to um, put some of the equipment in the columns, the columns would have to be fiberglass. They're currently now wood yeah, columns. Yeah, we, we would have to figure out a way of, of making sure that it's going to support the weight because all those columns are supporting a certain amount of weight when you go into a different material. Uh, but I, as I, you know, as Mike was saying, I, I agree with him 100% on that because you're dropping at 20 feet, and that's significant. You're, you're only talking 85 foot height on, on this site, which is usually these sites are sitting at 100, 110. We're already pretty low from where we would probably need to be to cover the right amount of space. So uh, dropping it would be very difficult if, if, if even doable at all. And not because it can't be done, but just for the simple fact that then the antennas wouldn't be able to do what they're supposed to do. Is there any reason to believe that future technology is going to be smaller? Or is this going to continue just to get larger? Such an unknown. I, I mean, now I'm looking at antennas that look like a pizza box. And they call them uh, massive MIMOs, and they're supposed to be super antennas. There's actually a hundred and something antennas within that little box. It's only a 24 by 24, and it's actually stronger than the antennas that are that are out now. So as far as it getting smaller, it, it could. Uh, I, I I don't know. I, I wish I knew. Is that an option for this site? <coughs> no, because it, it's a. It's like something said, that's it's, testing out right so now. They're not in, only that, it's in development for those. It's a 24 by 24. But lately, the sites have, so have been getting a 24, 24 inch, inch bigger. by 24 inch. 24 inch by 24 inch, and it's about that deep. It, it looks like a. Box. I've seen it does. It looks like pounds. a pizza box. I've seen. Yeah, these. it weighs yeah. about 100 pounds. They just came out. Does it have to be at the absolute top of a structure, or can it be somewhere else? Again, it's all according to the topography. As far as uh, of, of, of the land, it's it's according to the tree lines. Uh, it's according to structures that may be in the way. Uh, RF engineers are the ones that basically tell us what, what height it needs to be at, in order to accomplish what they're trying to do. So every site is different. I mean, if if uh, you know, we're in, we go to some sites where if we can't get 150 feet, we can't put the site in there because it's just not high enough. And then we're at other sites that we can get away with 60 feet because there's no trees. So it all depends. Right now, this one has been approved at this height for that technology. And that's why we're trying to accommodate anywhere we possibly can and, and try to make it as least noticeable as possible. Is, is the original uh, mast in storage somewhere? Or is it from the 90s? Is that still around? Or is no, that going? I don't think so. So we have now is just a fiberglass right. antenna that's up there now. And those those columns are at the moment are are wood or are those original columns at this point? Everything's original, Everything's as far original. as we know. The only thing that has been changed is that mast. 
uh, internally is where we have everything else. But that's the only external <coughs> change that, that has been made. And, and I would say I, sh I showed these pictures un unintroduced to some a couple of family and friends in a very unscientific poll. And until I pointed out the spire difference, people, nobody knew what the difference was. I was stunned. I was stunned that nobody saw that instantly. But they didn't. And again, this is a still picture. I mean, we can do like this and look at it. But I, I truly believe that once it's up there. Yeah, I mean, driving by, people are sort of used to seeing that. So I don't think it's going to be like so wide that it, somebody would just stop and go, you know, what happened here? Uh, I understand that um, if if the request was made that um, that you could put a mock-up or something close to that up there, I don't know if the board will ask for it, but it's something that, that I understand yeah, you. Something that we can do, we can we we can put something up there for a weekend for about four or five hours because we do have to we we do have to take the site down uh, if we do something like that. Uh, but I've already discussed that with Sprint. Like I said, that they're, they're willing to to work here. They they want to do the best they can. They want to be able to make this thing work. I don't know how people feel about that. I think the um, I think the visualization from from these photos demonstrates what's going on for me. I can see it's, it's very accurate. I mean, it, which is the proportion issue? Yes, but um, you know we're here to explore alternatives too. It's not here in a whole lot of good options. On, on, on what, what if what if these antennas were separated completely and put inside the steeple? I mean, I know that we didn't go 20 feet below, but where the clock is. Well, it's even lower. I'm sorry. That's even lower. That's even lower. As I said we're, we're we're probably at one of the lowest points that we can go to make these antennas work the way they're supposed to. If we keep taking the the, the altitude down on this thing, it, it's going to start hitting trees and obstacles that they won't be able to penetrate. So it wouldn't even be worth to put the antennas up there. Do we know how tall that fence is uh, underneath the dome? Like, is it like three feet tall or something like that? The fence well, what is underneath the dome right now? Could you walk up and is there a platform? What is up there? Yeah, so you, you come up uh, through the, the clocks are. And there's a wooden uh, stair, yeah, if you will, or ladder that goes up to a trap door. Yeah. Um, I wish I could and, see better. Uh, you come up within that fenced-in area. And, uh, yeah, the fenced-in area is probably like three and a half feet, I'd say. Tall? You know, so you, you know, you know, so it prevents you from falling off, you know, so. And how tall are these antennas? Just out of curiosity. These are 72 inches. 72 inches. Uh, 72 the, inches? Yeah. So they're six if, feet if, tall? If, again, if you go to page 06, that's the best description here. That dome is, uh, the top of the cupola is at uh, 80 feet, page and, has and the bottom is 70. What if you were to put them underneath the cupola? Well, that, that's what we said, and, and what we would have to in, do in that, we would have to change out that entire cupola. That whole cupola would have to become fiberglass. And that would have to all be Not fun. in the cupola. I'm saying where that latch door is, if you put them in the middle of that tower from the ground looking up, would you be able to see them? Yes. You would? Yep. Okay. That doesn't I work. Realize. Okay. You talked about Dan, you talked about netting or something? Mm -hmm. netting. You were going to put some type of netting? Yeah, but the problem is that, that this that, is an open that. space, so if you talk yeah. about somebody noticing Fine. something, they won't see sky through there no more. They'll just see a dark space. I mean, As we, we thought about it, that also. To me, it's like the stuff like you put down for to keep weeds. Right. It, it's very close to that that type of material. It's convincing. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it basically comes down to what what people will notice. And I think if you have antennas strapped to the supporting columns for that dome, you're going to see them because that if you you have a you know pretty much a 360 degree you know viewing of that of that uh, cupola. And then you try to, okay, so you really can't hide it behind the columns. And then if you, you, know, if you stick them under the column, you stick netting there, then you actually just really destroy the whole thing. There's a bell right underneath, you know, with a big wheel, wooden wheel. And so that's an issue, but also you wouldn't be able to see, you know, you, you, 
you're not going to be able to see through it. And, and if you look at if you look at that tower from any direction, you know the beauty of it is that you know you you see through it, and that's part of the architecture. Um, so you know we went round and round, and Bill Thayer was heavily involved, and it came down to you know the, the you know what would it look like if we had if we had to expand that mast, and uh, so we went out and did some visuals, and uh, it's really going to be uh, insignificantly. You know, noticed, and I don't think people will notice it. But if you do something else, like throw it up on a column or put netting up, then it's going to be really apparent. You know. You know, perhaps one way to come to terms with um, some concerns would be to um, to uh, model it so that we could uh, so that we could see. You know, I think um, um, sometimes the quantity you think is insignificant, but then you, when you look at it, you say, oh. But I think if we could appreciate, uh, at least I'll speak for myself, if I could appreciate um, that and apprehend that it's um, not that um, interruptive of proportion, it would, be, um, it would be better. Because, you know, unfortunately, it sounds like the state of antennas are in the, um, realm of when computers filled rooms, not they weren't laptops. You know, I, I mean in a sense where the technology mm -hmm. is. What's I was in the service, I remember those days. I was a computer <laughs> programmer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and yet, you know, to respect the need of the church for um, for carrying out their work I think is important too. Personally, I feel comfortable with with the application as it sits before us. I, I wouldn't need a, I wouldn't need to see a mock-up of any kind. I think for me, it it is somewhat unfair to hold these two stills next to each other. An individual will not have that benefit, and and therefore any anyone on the street, I don't believe they're going to notice a difference. And if this um, if this helps the church. Uh, help them maintain the structure. I think that's a much better benefit to the town as well. I agree, um, and I also think that what you have proposed, should there be a time that it will be reversed, is the least amount of change that will be done to the structure so that it could be reversed back, you know, if, if things change. Right. It's not, it's not uh, feasible anymore to do it. I also um, had a look several times before I could figure out which picture was which. Um, and I don't think from the street um, people would notice it as much. I think if your attention is called to it and you study it, you can tell the difference. Um, however, I think the difference is de minimis, um, and I don't think it impacts the structure enough to take away from the historical impact and the beauty of the, the structure. And again, I feel that the support of the community for this church is important. Okay. Mike, Mac, anything else? Yeah, it's um, you know I, I'm I'm conflicted here. I, I I can I notice a difference between the, the proportionality, um, and you know when looking at at the at the, uh, at the church from you know, up on Main Street, I can certainly you know see it uh, right now when when the Lincoln Building is put up. I think it's going to um, that that view is going to change a little bit, um, but. You know, I think I think the commission has 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 said it well. It's important that the um, that the church can can maintain its uh, its uh, its revenue stream and and um, remain intact and do the things that it wants to do. Um, so I think that that has a significant weight here with with me. Um, I wish there were other options, and um, I would certainly. Um, I would certainly um, ask the uh, the church and its um, 
and its membership when, when the technology does change to consider downsizing this, especially if it's at no cost and it's, a, it's an adjustment like we're doing here to go bigger, that it can go smaller when the time, time comes to restore, restore this por proportionality that, that exists now. Yeah, I don't know if they had a few breads from the, the lease contract, but I think part of the lease contract is that once if, once this technology or Sprint decides that they're not going to need it anymore, that they need to make it all back to the way it was. So yes, that's true. part of our agreement. Okay. And, um, you know, recognizing that there's fiberglass up there right now, there's really nothing to to keep or store for for the future other than to have some some images of this to, to show what it what it looked like and maybe there's some images before the 1990s too that are around <coughs> Virginia I, I know you're the you're the one here that's asking for you know a mock-up um, or or something that's more visually um, we can we can certainly ask for that um, I don't know if it's going to change your view one way or the other, with it or without it. Um, I can yield on that suggestion. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Ronnie, would you like to make a sure. motion? On this? You're going to be the motion person tonight. Am I? <laughs> My training period's over. I'm now <laughs> I'd like to make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for the new North Meeting House at 1 Lincoln Street, for the mast at the top of the um, cupola to be enlarged according to the diagram on page 06 of the submissions by Sprint um, in order to accommodate an increase in technology uh, for uh, the communications purposes. Um, as was mentioned, if, this, if, their te if the technology changes, it's um, asked that uh, the uh, mast be returned back uh, as, as, uh, to its original structure. And uh, our understanding is that the materials will be fiberglass. Well, it's a fiberglass-like material. I, I don't know if that's the exact terminology. For okay, that. a fiberglass-like material. And you're going to also um, replace the, um, looks like there's a small flag at the, at the very top. Yes, sir. Um, you'll replace that, put that on there? Yes, sir. That, that to be um, replaced on the new, uh, on the new mast. Uh, you want us to hold... Excuse me. The weather vane. Weather vane. The weather vane. You want us to use that one, correct? Yeah, definitely. We can yeah. use that one. Yeah. No, yeah, that's what I want to make sure. Um, applicant to uh, to supply photographs um, of the church and the mast um, prior to the uh, prior to the demolition and the replacement. And if we can find anything from the Historical Society or, or any other photographs from the, uh, from the 90s, I think that would be helpful, too. And I wonder whether the commission would be interested in the top of that mast, perhaps. It looks a little canister-like, perhaps, that the finishing treatment of the top, maybe a small dome finish. I don't, I don't, I don't think we could go around and around on what that might be. But What's was that repli replicated the way it was um, when the installation was put in in the 90s? So it like the, the, it, the original mass. mass? I believe it was, yeah. <coughs> yeah but it was, it was slightly, I think it was like three inches more than it was. Okay, yeah, I think, but I'm just saying, if it ends, it already has a little ball. Yeah, it already has it. We're keeping the original. 
like some cavitation. softening so rather so than the a the soup can look. Be, yeah, would, would, would be, uh, you mean where the vein itself is? is? At the, I'm thinking as, as the, a dome. As the You're pole for a dome. terminates and starts to support the weather vane, yeah, a transition the, that might be we, a we, little I think because more. of the weather vane assembly, the way it is yeah. on page uh, 10, yeah. that we have to kind of, um, to get it back on top, we have to kind of build it the same way. It's actually you look yeah. at uh, the left-hand corner of page 10, the three, pe the three pieces in the flag are all part of the weather vane, and those are going to go right back on you know, as, as shown on that. Yeah, there's not, not a lot of room to taper at the top, it looks like. Mm -hmm. But you get what I was yeah. yes, thinking. Right. Okay, do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thanks for you guys coming in. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank Are uh, is Sally here? Uh -huh. I'll be outside. Let's see, I'll check and see. Okay, uh, next up we have uh, the councilmen are here. Sally Weston's here to talk about some design changes to the garage at um, 63 Lincoln Street. Thanks for coming in, Sally. Hey, Lee, how you doing? Great. How are you? So, um, I think you remember a couple months ago we got a demolition permit and a, um, a certificate of or a certificate of appropriateness. Um, for the project, but we also had to get a zoning variance. So again, we're trying to, you know, satisfy sort of four entities, of course, whenever we come, is the homeowner, historic, zoning, and the neighbors. Um, so, of which we have one here. So <laughs> we're trying to do our very best job. So, um, after we received our approval from Historic, I did go, I had actually gone to Emily Wentworth, the zoning officer before, like last year, and um, she wasn't sure that there would be an issue with the garage if it was two story. But um, when I went back to talk to her about submitting the drawings, she felt that if we had sort of a two story or one and a half story within the 15 foot setback, that zoning might not look favorably on that. So, um, in talking to Lee and Caroline um, about the project, we looked at modifying the um, the garage slightly. So, um, I think you have in your packet. Um, basically, the section is the same, the front elevation is the same, but the side elevations in the rear changed slightly. So I did another model. <laughs> so this oh, was the, the model that you remember that, you know, we have the, the curved brackets and, um, you know, we, we, at, we pulled the shed dormers back a foot and we lowered the plate height. Um, and that was the one that got approved. So, but to meet zoning so that this wall is 15 feet from the setback because it's brand new. At 15 feet, we can be bigger than what exists, if that makes sense. Um, you know, that we're not creating any more impact to the neighborhood or anything like that. We're not, it's not more detrimental because we're not making it bigger within the approved setback. So in this case, we're not asking for a variance. We're asking for a finding from zoning, which is a little less mm -hmm. comprehensive. So this is the new model. 
if you will, and your, your little overlays show that. So basically what we did is we, we kept the setback of the shed dormers and the plate height the same, but what we did is we put sort of a low roof on the back so that the councilmen still get that little bit of storage in the back for all those bikes and yard tools and things like that. And then we have the two, you know, the two car garage in the front and the shed dormers just get slightly shorter. So virtually from the front, it's what we, you know, you had approved, but from the back, it's, you know, just got this longer shed dormer. And again, this wall would be built at the 15 foot setback and our dormers just get a little bit smaller. Does that make sense? Yeah, Sally, yeah. if you could just lay it down on the um, yeah. where it's supposed to go, that would be helpful too. And just kind of maybe everybody can just look at it and rotate a little bit to see the how the proportion looks relative to the house. Anything else, Lee, or? Okay, good. Jane, any comments or from the neighbors, anything? I'm, I'm hearing complete support of okay. this. You want, to you want to step up to the mic, or we oh, can yes. just, okay. <laughs> I think we can all hear me. What's your address, just so we know? Lincoln Street. All right. I'm across the street. Okay. And I think probably what I'd like to say is that as I come out of my driveway, I see a historic violation every day at 11 Burnett Avenue, where they were, because it's not in the district, they were able to put an addition that belongs in Cambridge. It's a two-story um, white wall with some black windows in it. And if that isn't a violation of the streetscape, yeah. I don't know what else is. So this this is refreshing to me. Yeah, there's only so much we can do. No, and I, I understand. It's not in the district, but if, if the councilsmen have made the house so much more attractive. They got rid of the greenhouse in the front. The landscaping is proportioned nicely, and I, I think this is a wonderful idea. Thank you. Okay. Uh, discussion, comments, questions? I have a question, a clarification. Mm -hmm. um, if this is going to meet the 15-foot setback, why is it considered a zoning board finding? So well, that's just what she explained to me. There's different paperwork for findings and different paperwork for a zoning variance. And because we're not making it any more non-conforming, right. we're actually lowering the roof, then I guess I'm just doing what they tell me. <laughs> you know, I've usually gone for a variance, but this is like a, because again, we're not asking for more, we're actually asking for less because the roof on this is actually lower than what's existing. And you're asking for what's allowed? Yes, yes. So this way, you know, we kind of meet all the, because we're adding on to an existing structure, that's why we have to go to zoning. You'd think that if you're adding on to sort of, I mean, because we're going to need to take the roof off of this garage because it has those little scoops, you know, that come out this side. So we will have to alter the roof. But you, you kind of think that if you were really making it less, but you know, it's what they zoning requires. So, you know, again, I think it's because we're making it less invasive, we're not making it any more um, again non conforming to the neighborhood or the building itself, and we're meeting the fifteen foot setback. That that's why they said to use to do a finding. And it's different paperwork. I would all I would say is that I mean I think it's I think it's appropriate. They're modest modifications. The only thing I would say is that the elevation that's actually in the new packet is not the elevation that was approved that shows on the front elevation that shows the sides in your section matches. But this one actually still shows. Oh, the maybe they put the old ones in, but it's a foot off. Foot, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, if we have we so many motion, different I drawings. I apologize. Yeah. 
<laughs> We've submitted so many, but it was I, in your it was in your last package. Yes. Yeah. It was okay. Just, good. That's probably a mistake. Yeah. But we definitely you can tell from this that it's a foot in, and you know we reduce that eave height, you know the plate height on the second floor to kind of make those shed dormers low. In there. For me, the model made all the difference. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're getting good at that. I really like the first version, but if that's not going to get approved, I, I don't have a problem with the second version at all. Okay. Same. Yep. No. How many meetings has this been? It's been a year and a month. Well, since we started. How many it's meetings been, have you been in here with us? So is this our fourth or fifth? Fifth. Fifth plus the site visit? Yeah, fifth plus the site visit. Yeah, you know, we, um, we, take, we take a little bit of heat for, let's try to turn this right, not expediting things as quickly as we could. Um, it's unfortunate that initially you got some uh, guidance from zoning that was a little bit different than what you have now. Um, Trying to think of how we could have we could have expedited this a little bit better. Um, if we had this initially, um, you know, for me, this has got. You know, I didn't vote for this initially because of the massing. Now you've got something that's a little bit smaller, that I think is a little bit more um, consistent with the neighborhood and your immediate. Uh, the garages that are around. So I'm more favorably inclined on on this this version than I was in the previous. Um, optimally, I think, you know, what sh one shed dormer works best with this, looking out onto the backyard, but, you know, these are, now it's smaller. It's a smaller shed dormer. So, you know, visually, you know, unless you're looking at this straight on from the street, um, you know, it looks a little, it's, it's not consistent with, with the rest of the immediate neighbors, but if you're looking at an angle, it's, it's, I think it meets all our criteria. So I'm just, um, you know, the massing now is, um, I think is more appropriate for the neighborhood and more appropriate for the house and what's there. It looks more like a garage um, than, than an outbuilding, which your immediate neighbors do not have. So. So um, I, I appreciate the changes. Um, I wish it could have gone, you know, uh, you know, a couple meetings instead of five. But you know, if we had this originally, somehow, I think we could cut through a lot of a lot of this. So. Well, that's an iterative process. Yeah. Hopefully, I mean, we're you know, as, as we'd said in the first meeting that we had, and we tried to work a lot with Sally in the beginning to 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 achieve this, but we. You know, we, we do view ourselves as steward of this, stewards of this home, and um, it needed a lot when we moved into it, and we've been able to chunk it in the way that a lot of people have to, and this is the last hurrah of, um, you know, bringing the yard and the landscape and everything to, to really what it, it, it had been and always was. Um, it's just so we, we, you know, when we still got a lot of work to do, we got to get this yard done too. So, um, but, uh, but, you know, it, it, we're excited to get moving on it. We hope that zoning can, you know, feel that this is appropriate too, and and we'll we'll be on with our business. Any other thoughts? Okay. Um, Mike, do you want to make a motion on this sure. with the? Um, yep. With the uh, modification of the drawing that you pointed out, Fair enough. Um, I'd like to make a motion um, <coughs> to issue a certificate of appropriateness to 63 Lincoln Street um, to for modifications to uh, previously uh, approved plans for the garage, which pull back the second floor um, to accommodate for zoning. Um, drawings approved are dated May 3rd. 2018 with the exception of the front elevation that was submitted as part of the package um, the elevation the front elevation should have the um, side dormers pulled in a foot to be consistent with the 
building section in the package um, in the originally approved front elevation. A, A2.1. A2.1. I'm sorry, it is what? A2.1. A2.1. Yeah, it's uh, six inches. It's even, more, to be even more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. Nice model, Sarah. <laughs> it is a beautiful it's model. It's my new job. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, you can put that in under glass or something in your house. Oh, yeah, exactly. You're welcome. You. See Sally. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have... Um, Australia's on two crooked meadow lane. Uh, they would like to uh, install a cupola over the garage and replace an existing lamp. How you doing? <laughs> Got your hands full. Hi. Hi guys, this Hi. is Henry. Hi Henry. Hi Henry. What's up Henry? Say hello. You want to sit there? That makes it official. All right. So we got your application and we got some measurements um, for the uh, the barn and the, the cupola mm -hmm. that you like to install. And we've got some visuals on the uh, lamps too. Um, anything else you want to, maybe Henry wants to tell you, <laughs> say what he wants to do. <laughs> you have anything you'd like to say, Henry? Henry, uh, what, do you, what do you think about what your dad wants to do? <laughs> no, he likes the new house, so. <laughs> Um, there is an existing um, uh, plywood box that's on on the garage, the same size as what we bought. Um, I imagine there was a cupola there at some point, or something, but it's letting water in to yeah. the garage. So. Okay. Uh, and we can, you know, the plan is to paint it in the same color as the house, the garage. And then for the uh, the lamp posts. Um, it's just like very badly corroded, um, rusted, and uh, the electrical in there doesn't work and I can't really get to it. I don't know if rebuilding it's an option. It looks kind of, to me, a little squatty and large. Do you have some questions? <laughs> ben, you want to start? Um, are you, are you reusing the existing fixture or are you just replacing the post, the lamp post? Well, honestly, I'd like to replace the entire thing. The, the, the glass that's in the current fixture uh, is held together by just, like, very corroded, rusted metal. Um, I don't know if there's a chance to rehabilitate it. Okay. Um, and we frankly just like to put it with a, like a simpler yeah. style. Um, it looks... Well, From the photo, it looks enormous. Yeah, it's very large, and um, it's kind of oddly short. Yeah. 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 It's a funny looking layout. Yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. <laughs> we thought we were... Uh... <laughs> but it, I mean, it's hard to tell from the... It, it does look like a very large head on a very small body. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Henry, they're not talking about you. <laughs> so you'd submit, you'd submit a... a a fixture to Andrea at a later date. Actually, well, there's, there's, there there's is something one. in here. There's, there's one. There. Oh, that proposed. would be it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, we didn't obviously purchase it yet, but like that, that was what we're aiming. For. Okay. Very post and light. <laughs> and would you put it in the same place? Same place. Yep. Question for Andrea. Yes. This, the dimensions on here are consistent with the other correspondence that we. I. Um, let's see. I, sorry, I didn't print that out. But that's all right. Yeah. Megan, um, your wife, uh, wrote back and said that you know within a half inch or something that the new meets these. Uh, yeah. She calculated. Yeah. 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 These guidelines. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Buddy, come on over here. <laughs> All right, give me your bed. I hear you. No further questions. Anything else? Virginia? Good. Um, you know, the, um, the cupola, in terms of the width, um, I understand and um, is congruent with um, recommendations. The proposal of this one, and you may not have any because this is a standard, you're not doing a custom cupola, right? Um, but it looks a little squat. And maybe it's just, um, maybe it's a feature of the um, cut sheet yeah. uh, in terms of proportion. I'm not sure. I realize the height of a cupola isn't as important as the width mm -hmm. um, on a garage or barn. But just, it's an observation more than anything. And um, Well, if it is, I don't know what the record, if, is there? Um, it's 27 um, high. High? Yeah. So if it's not that, I could build it out to be another inch or two high or something like that to make it right. It's probably just a, you know, it's probably a look-see to see if it um, right. um, really fits in terms of the uh, garage. Okay. And, and the, I have one other comment about the um, post. The post, you're proposing a 74 inch high post and the lamp on here, and I realize this may be to be determined, but that looks a little bit like, um, Please uh, that looks a little, um, Dumpy compared to the um, height of the post. Um, what? Um, sorry, I'm missing that. And maybe you're just talking about the post here that you want us to look at, not the um, light on the top of the post. Oh yeah, it was more so the posts. Um, so, so we shouldn't be distracted by the uh, light. But the light, you, I mean, I agree. The light looks almost like. Uh, I think this this is just the best picture we had. But like the light, I would imagine, should be a little bit larger than that. Yeah. <laughs> it does look like it's a letdown. There. <laughs> right. Okay. Especially after this very auspicious. <laughs> I know. We're all over. Sure. We're yeah. all over the place here, right. huh? <laughs> to your point, <laughs> you have to get a cut sheet. Yeah, I would say just submit a cut sheet of that. Okay. Sure. All right. Hi. Hi. He's fine. Uh, so, what is this? a cut sheet? That just means. Uh, yeah. The, the, the specifications. Forward. Whatever you order. Uh huh. You can just submit. Okay. Um, I wonder. It would have the dimensions mm -hmm. and the specifications for the. Uh, can you show me how to turn that off? Sure. And she, you can just email that to me. Okay, but like can something along this style is. Yes. Yeah, so is that correct? Can you show me how to turn okay. that on? And the color of the post. Oh, what color would you? I'm happy to go black, um, but I think this is just to demonstrate that it would. So does it matter the material? I mean, if I was going to do wood, but does it have to be wood? I, What's the current post? Can <sighs> current post is like a, it is wood. Floor? It is wood. Yes. But how does it, it work? Be it should. Okay. How does this work? I think you push the button. I push the button. I don't Anything? think I've ever seen a black. Right. Post. I was going to guess white work? post, wooden yeah. post. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what was that? Metal. Oh, metal. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. talking wood, sure. Right. Yeah. So I mean, let's be very close to this wood with a larger lamp. Yeah. And then make sure we get it. Uh, show you the the cut sheet before we yeah. proceed. My recommendation would be for white, not black. I'll do white. Yeah. White. Anything else? Okay. Virginia, you want to make a motion on this? Uh, yeah. I um, move for a certificate of appropriateness, appropriateness for two Crooked Meadow Lane for um, a wood post light, 74 inches high, as shown in the um, presented cut sheet, painted white, with a um, uh, lantern to be sent to the commission uh, with its dimensions, and 
Secondly, a cupola to be 22 inches wide times 27 inches tall or <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be a first. We <laughs> usually have adults run out of the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Applicant attempts escape. <laughs> so you didn't like what you heard. <laughs> Gosh, Henry. <laughs> um, uh, times 27 inches high, or perhaps the commission would make a little higher or prove a little higher if it uh, visually um, is more appealing to proportions. Um, and you're going, to, you're going to paint that white or? Well, I don't know. I was thinking of actually uh, potentially doing the, the great white and the, the body of it red, but or I don't know. I could do the whole thing white, I could do the whole thing red, whatever you guys think. What's the barn though is? Is red. The barn the barn's is red. red. Has yeah. some white. And then yeah, garage, garage door is white. I think the expectation would be red. Red. Okay. All red. <coughs> With the cupola to be painted red. <laughs> Henry, you like red? You like the color red? Oh, you've got blue on. That's nice. A second. A second from Ronnie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. Bye, Henry. Bye. He's out of here. <laughs> He's out of here. Oh my gosh, that is too funny. Yeah, that was good. That was a first. No. An good. escapee. He did really well, though. Yeah, he's so cute. Great. Very poised. Great. For okay. Those uh, next up, we have uh, 712 Main, uh, Main Street. Um, the uh, Carol Carolins yep. are here. Um, they would like to install a fence in the back <coughs> for a horse and a uh, small shelter. How you doing? Great. I wish I had brought my child with yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say it's easier you when you have your kids. Neighbors? <laughs> yes, exactly. I wanted to take a minute. It's just it, in and out with your kids. <laughs> now you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> just kidding. Um, yeah, so we are interested in, uh, as, as you described, and I wanted to mention that our neighbors, the Friends, um, came in uh, hopefully to support the project. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what uh, you need to hear, um, but I can run through the generic description that was submitted. That's sure. Right. sure. Um, and certainly my wife um, has been the primary driver of this project, but she can't be here. So if we have questions that I can't answer, I'll do my best to, we'll do our best to get back to you. But um, the general um, story is that it's a, a, approximately a 12 by 16 um, run-in shed for uh, a horse. And it'll be made of um, pine board and batten style siding um, with an asphalt shingled roof. Um, and it'll be set in a manner where it we believe you won't really see it at all unless you're walking slowly by our house on the street at a certain angle. But there will be approximately 80 by 100, um, most likely three rail potentially, four um, fencing in 10 foot increments. There will also be pine, uh, pine wood. And in the structure itself, it's largely just an open structure that will be placed on um, some gravel just to make sure it can be level. Um, but on one side of it, there'll be a small um, little area that will serve as a tack room for storage. And um, that's largely the, the picture of the project. And I think you've got some submitted pictures as well. Mm -hmm. Any questions, comments from the audience? Thanks for being here. Right. Questions? Discussion? So the shed sits within with, within the fence area? So, uh, so I believe the way that yeah. she's picturing it is it'll be the... Yeah. You have a picture There's of a the little shed. drawing here. Yeah, right? she's okay. got a drawing. The shed will be in the fenced area and I think it'll be... The fencing will be coming off of both corners of the, of the shed. Okay. So the, the back of the shed I think is supposed to be flush with the fencing. 
and the um, colors is that I don't um, natural oh, yeah I think natural is the best way to describe it there's okay no plan to do any coloring and so in exhibit one it's it looks black but that's just to to depict mm -hmm. the location can right? I see which ones oh the, the oh that, that one. looks like it's just that black pen yeah so that's um, used that's the black pen is the reason for that <clears throat> I so, but the, the notion is something, the natural, the example fencing in this. Yes, yeah, sorry. So I see what you're saying. So there's, um, in, the, in this exhibit, there's a sort of a, a darkish structure, and that's not, that's just to identify how it would to be To locate sitting, it sitting, in that yeah, photo. But yeah. the pictures on the front are the, uh, the colors that she would have. The, there's a wrapped pressure treated posts. I'm assuming those are wrapped in wood, or the pine boards. You're hiding the green, the green color of the pressure treated posts. It sounds like it says mm, yeah. wrapped pressure treated wrapped posts. Pressure -treated post. Is that just like the pine, the pine boards of the of the fence? I actually don't know the answer to that. Okay. I'll be honest with you. Um, it's probably the posts, right, Ben? You've got to be ground? right. Right. So they'd have to be pressure treated for the ground, but just to make sure there, there's no uh, PVC or right. a wrap is gen is it can be a PVC. Yeah, it's definitely, there's, I do not, do not believe there's any picture in her mind of PVC Okay. Anywhere. I think this is all wood, pine wood structure. Is this the facade you'll see from the street? No, so that'll be, it'll be twisted sideways. So okay, you'll really see this be, facade. You'd be, if you could see anything, that would be, that, that side angle okay. would be what you're seeing. But the visibility is in this, um, she's got one picture um, of yeah. the house from the sidewalk, and you can see there's a there's a dip that happens in the backyard, and there's various trees and bushes that will be obscuring the view from that side. Hey, John, I was just curious why um, you're not incorporating the the current barn um, into any of this, as far as. It's an excellent question. Um, so the, uh, the current plan is that the, the horse will only be a fair weather horse on the property and that the majority of the um, colder uh, period of time it will be moved to a friend's much uh, more recently finished and um, available barn that has available space. So it will be, um, it's envisioned to largely be living on this property I guess in, this, in this in the summer season in the swings on either side in the spring and fall okay so there isn't as much need to use that um, and also we were trying to be very um, cognizant of the proximity of that property relative to the neighbor and um, his pool and things like that and so we were trying to situate the horse in a way that would make it an optimal distance for both neighbors' benefits, as well as optimally being able to use it and reasonably operationally get to and from it um, for all of the care that is required. Good. Is that a good plan? Yeah, I support it. Guys, I, good. I, I'm all for it. Okay, I'll make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for 712 Main Street for the um, construction of a paddock area that will be 100 by 80 feet um, with a three rail fence in pine with wood wrapped pressure treated posts and a 10 by 16 shelter that will be natural colored with pine board and batten pine colored board and batten pine. Um, the <coughs> as depicted on the submission uh, with a map outlining where uh, that will be positioned on the property. Thing. Yeah, exhibit exhibit one through exhibit four. Thank you. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Can't wait to walk by. <laughs> Thanks, John. So, Andrew, we're running a little bit early. Oh, I have things I'd, to say. I don't know if John's here yet, but... That never happens. I know, it's rare. Um... Yeah. Shortly. Um... I would just like to mention a couple of things since we have a moment or two. Um, just in case people don't know, um, Taste of Hingham has been canceled oh. for Saturday because we're supposed to have torrential oh, right. downpours. This, this weekend? Yes. This coming Saturday it has been canceled. I don't know when it will be rescheduled to what day. I don't know. Um, but the Battle of Grape Island is taking place on Sunday. And uh, so I just, um, and we're hoping for much better weather. It's not supposed to be torrential. We may have some uh, occasional thunderstorms, but um, the reenactors don't care. So, and this year uh, we've added, well, we've added a number of things. Last year we only had our Hingham Militia. This year we've added the um, His Majesty's 10th Regiment Guard of Foot. And they are the British and they will be, uh, they will be coming in full regalia and there will be a reenactment. Uh, we also have um, Elijah Levitt, Levitt who will be sitting in his uh, um, who will be approached by the militia once the um, battle is over because of course they're enraged that he allowed the British to harvest hay and other things from his from Grape Island. So this is taking place at the bathing beach and um, it will be begins at 1 and it goes till about 3 and there's, um, we have a wonderful cake, huge sheet cake from Montilio's um, that depicts Grape Island. Mm. Very, very nice. And we also will have um, soft drinks and um, water. And there will be, there's food from, um, also Montilio's is sending over some other pastries. And then we have food from the fruit center. So, and it's all free, so it's a very nice event. And, um, oh, also we've got, uh, this year we've got sound, which is good. So thanks to Bonnard, the, um, the captains of the militia, uh, two militia will be, um, have, a, have a mic. And there's, because uh, last year we had a little trouble being heard, but we were right at the shipyard last year it was very windy so anyway this is great fun and um, hope to see you folks at home come on out come on down it's great <laughs> all right thanks John is here yeah is it on? yep whenever you're ready thanks John hey, John. hey Jim Where would you like? Oh, you have to position yourself so that oh, near you. The microphone. Yes, okay. near the microphone. Jim, thank you for having us out. It's my pleasure. Um, Thanks for coming. A week or so ago, it was really helpful. <coughs> Get inside and walk around and look at your. It's not quite as crooked as it used to be, but it's. <laughs> it's getting there. See, there's a lot of digging going on yeah, right yeah. now. A lot out. of dirt. Trying to get in and out of there a little bit more safely. Yep. Where's the, um, are you on, uh, no, it's septic, right? Here? It's a septic system, a three bedroom <coughs> septic system on the right side of the house. Right. Under that big pile of dirt right now. Essentially. Right side as you're looking at it? Yes. Yep. Right, right before you get to the wall? Exactly, yeah. Yep. Thank you. 
Hi, it's John Teriyaki, Teriyaki Architectural Design. I'm here with uh, Jim Magner, the homeowner for 317 Main Street. And I know you have some familiarity with the property and you've been up there. Um, so I'll just briefly go over what we submitted um, for the renovation plan and show you some elevations uh, because I know there were some questions about elevation design, which is really what this project is about since there are no massing changes proposed, no additions mm -hmm. or roof line changes. Um, so the, the house, the original house, as you know, consists of um, kind of a lower level facing Main Street with four um, garage doors and the grade goes up and there's a little entry door over there and uh, under this garage level there's actually yet another basement level access from the backyard and so the backyard there's a, there's a pretty uh, big drop off with uh, vinyl siding. Uh, there's a mixture of windows. Um, most of them are wood but the ones that we were most excited about were these two over two double hungs. You see a, um, a double here and I'll show you uh, um, during your site visit you may have seen them as well. So that was really the look that inspired us for this project as we uh, eliminate all of the garages uh, which I think is a big contribution to Main Street uh, and turning that facade into something that could have been there um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Um, just going through the existing floor plans briefly, this was the package, just existing basement, the lowest level, garage level with four partitioned um, garages and a little utility room. And then the upper level above that, uh, accessed by that single door, currently the, um, basically the kitchen, dining, living area with two bedrooms. And then above that is an existing attic space. Let's go through the floor plans briefly. And then we can get into the elevations. Uh, basically, the basement is being proposed to be mostly left unfinished, potentially creating a multi-purpose room there. But basically, a utility room, potential bathroom, uh, a new L-shaped stairway that would go up all the way through the house, preserving the existing chimney. So we thought that since the chimney has to stay here, that creates an opportunity to take advantage of that nook as a new stairway because the existing stairways are very tight and um, they're not the, the flow isn't very good. So the same stairway goes to the uh, what used to be the garage level, which now becomes a main living area, a semi-open living area with um, sitting room, kitchen, and dining room, and a little side entry with a little mudroom area and powder room. Kind of a more secondary entry at that level where there used to be a garage door. And then above that, we're creating a bedroom level, a master bedroom, a second bedroom, and an office, two bathrooms, and above. And we're preserving the existing single entry, even though um, it doesn't exactly correspond to the bedroom use, but we thought that it was important to preserve that just as a remnant of the formal front entry of the house with obviously a, a new, nicer, historic door as opposed to the more maybe glassier door at the, at the second entrance. It's also set back, so we thought that having two entrances on Main Street could be justified, especially when one of them is a whole level down and is set back, uh, serving sort of a different plan purpose. And then the attic level will be renovated as is uh, potentially finished into a playroom or left as storage. It's uncertain right now, but the same stairway would go up there as well. And I just want to put together the existing elevations um, together with the proposed, just to show you some of the differences. Uh, just a quick view of the existing, I guess, front left and right sides, which are the visible sides from Main Street. But as you can see, there's really uh, some blank areas on the facade, kind of a mixture of windows. Obviously, the problem with the four garage doors lining Main Street. And as you wrap around the corner, there's really no correlation between window sizes. Clearly, <coughs> things haven't changed over time, uh, kind of haphazardly, maybe, at certain points. Uh, you know, met, um, railings that may not exactly be um, fitting with the, with the look. 
So we're basically taking all this and creating a new facade that works with the floor plan, but also I think creates a nice historic language and a nice rhythm of windows and some consistency throughout. Um, going back to the two entries, the existing entry location remains the secondary uh, kind of mudroom entry over here, a new two over two windows on the front facade, uh, and then left and right side as it wraps around stays pretty uniform. Uh, maybe a different railing style for the entry, something a little more traditional. Um, and I know at the site visit there was a question as to whether we could use the, the skinny two over two double hungs instead of changing the proportion as we did in this drawing. So I, we put that together quickly just to show these side by side. So these are the nine existing two over twos. They are two feet by five feet tall. So they're kind of skinny. Um, whereas something a little more rectangular and allows a little better sill height inside for functional reasons, which is why we went in this direction. But I just want to show these side by side uh, because I know that was a question that was brought up. So that's in a nutshell what we're proposing in terms of what's, what's visible from Main Street and what's going to impact the streetscape the most, which we think will be an improvement. I didn't talk about materials, sorry. Um, we're planning to take the existing asphalt roof off and replace it with cedar shakes throughout and also um, replace the existing vinyl siding on the back with um, primed cedar clapboards and infill clapboards or replace them wherever needed and then repair and replace trim wherever needed. There are portions of the house that are missing you know, complete corner boards, um, especially in the back and some inconsistent widths. So we're trying to make those more substantial throughout. Basically six inch corner boards and eight inch freeze boards wherever we can fit them keeping the substantial freeze boards on the gables as, as is, replace or repair them as needed. Um, and also introducing um, a water table detail, which we think um, creates a nice base to that lower level as it drops down and ties everything together. Good, thank you. What a difference. Um, Mr. Chairman, I do have, uh, I, and it's probably hard to see, but I'll I'll pass this around. This is the this is the photograph of. It it was um, actually Firehouse Niagara Engine Three, and behind that, where the arrow is pointing, is the this house. It was at the time a barn, um, but it is. It was converted, as we know, in 19, circa 1930, and unfortunately, you know, as so many of our older buildings, this was all lost. Um, but we've now got this uh, converted stable, which is wonderful, and um, this is on page 75 of Hingham Through Time which is by Steve Dempsey and Alexander McMillan and is available at the Historical Society. I'd like to get it. So I'm going to pass this around. Have you, have you seen this? I have not. No. Ah, there you go. So cool. So where was that building located? That was right in front. Oh, really? Yes, it... that was what was on oh, the street. Oh, I see. And this. Is, Incredible. is now your house, yes. Were See? they attached? Um, I don't know if they were attached or not. It's really hard to tell. Probably oh, not. But they yeah. used to, that's where the horses were for the fire engines wow. that pulled the fire <coughs> engines. Um, and Andrew, you think in the 30s that building was taken down? It's, it says that in our Form B, that yeah. I don't know when the other buildings were taken down. Right. But, um, the house was converted from a stable to a house. But the building in front is gone. And we think that happened. Probably around the same time, yeah. maybe earlier, I don't know. 
I didn't I, I didn't research that. Sorry. So. Curious. Okay, we'd like to start. Got a couple of questions in regard to I think I think these are great improvements. My questions are really related to the window and some of the details. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I know you kind of did the study of the existing windows versus the new windows, and I think the proportions of the new windows seem to be better. Um, are you able to reuse any of those other windows on other sides of the house or even in the back? I know you can't see it from the street, but it, if you can reuse those, I think that would be... I think the answer is yes. I think, Jim, you thought that maybe about half of them are usable, of the nine, at least five maybe? Yes. And if they don't go in the front, they can certainly go on the sides. Yeah. Um, because we do have nine windows in the front that are uniform, and if we can't get all of them consistently replaced. Yeah, I'd, be, ha I'd be happy to do that. I mean, we looked at them in a little more detail after we did that you know, <coughs> study there, and we figured five or six of them of the nine, three of them are definitely um, in rough shape. But, but five or six of them I think we could bring back to life, yes. And I'd be happy to use them on either side, you know. Yeah, I think wherever, depending on how many you have and how the composition mm -hmm. works. Right, exactly. So we don't end up with one off one. Right. Like on the right. facade. But yeah. I think either of these facades could work. Maybe more so this one because we've got a high gable end. Yeah. yeah. Um, so maybe the right. on south a, elevation. You don't have a roof line to obstruct the taller window. Right. Yeah. Um, and the other question I had um, is sort of just in regard to these windows and sort of the trim and everything's kind of sloping, I assume you're going to take this opportunity to without question things out. Yes. And yes. Okay. And if you notice in the existing elevations, we conveniently ignored the slope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting too, too complicated to draw. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's all I have. Significant. Yeah. Are you going to do anything with the wall in the front? The stone wall. Yeah. As far as I know, the Landscape walls are remaining as is, but yes, just that's what we're going to leave here, it. Okay, if that's all right. Any um, so the 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 driveway comes down into the old garage. Yes, yeah, so that I'm going to put a retaining wall. So so you, you would have. Well, my goal is to put have a U-shaped driveway or have a driveway that allows me to drive to get away from the, the, the troubled intersection mm -hmm. um, where Main Street turns yeah. and come out. I already have a permit for a curb cut. So I, you can actually see the curb was already cut next to Jack Conway's office. And almost immediately, if you're looking at the Jack Conway's office, I'm immediately to the right. Okay. So there's a, there's a new driveway there cut in already on the curb. Okay. Um, so that's going to be our main driveway right there. Well, that's where we're intending to have our main driveway. Okay. And I'm just um, I'm wondering from the just water coming down from, you know, on the existing driveway. Absolutely. So yeah. what are you going to are you going to fill that in a little bit or what do you? Yeah. Do? So do you, and then kind of retain it in front of the house all the way over and have almost like a, have almost like two tiers so there wouldn't be access other than stairs down to that lower area there, gotcha. and and then just drain that heavily and then drain the upper part as well around the house to the back side. So you're going to build it up. Exactly. Yeah. That's the intent. Oh, that'd be nice. But yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just even being, having been there for a month or so, that, that intersection is just very, yeah. um, it's just a challenge to get it out of there. So. And you just want to keep the water away from the house. Absolutely, yes, yeah. So your driveway will be a, in front of, of the, the existing door. Exactly right. Okay. Yep, yep. Are you going to have to build anything up to the slope on the left-hand side? Yes, yeah, so there'll have to be a retain. Um, Back. Yes, a retaining wall. So my idea was to pretty much just continue that existing, existing stone wall right around and just use it as a retaining wall. Okay. You got some um, engineering to do back in there. Yes. It looks beautiful. Mr. Chairman. Yep. Um, so. I think this is a great improvement, but would it be possible to uh, maybe uh, um, approve the house if we were to lean that way as it stands and then ask for a, uh, um, a, a landscape drawing as it related to materials and things like that once you got to that portion of it? Sure, yeah, absolutely. 
I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm into that, so I could, yeah, I would be happy to discuss that with you guys right now and, and do whatever your suggestions are, to be honest, with mater material-wise. I, I have no, I'll, I'll, I'd put whatever materials you guys would prefer. I have no problem doing that. Okay. So you have, the foundation is all, it's granite and stone. Correct. Back yep. in there, so you were thinking about matching that coming around, maybe. Correct. Yes. To, to the rear. Yep. I don't think we're going to see. I mean, maybe if you stood on the neighbor's side, you could see back in there, but I don't know how much you're going to be able to see. Yeah. Anything. So you won't see any of the wall at all. You'd yeah. see plant. Essentially, we're planning on putting plantings and a fence in front of the house. Yeah. And my wife had met with Andrea this week, and I think she was talk already started talking about that. So, um, you know, we'll put what you know. That's pretty much the. I think the only thing you'll see is whatever we ultimately do for kind of planting screenings and then a fence as well. Um, and yeah, so I'd be I'm happy to comply with whatever suggest suggestions you have on that. Directly in front, whatever you plan on doing in front, we might be able to see with how you want to tear it down to the house. Okay. So, um, you know, uh, <coughs> natural materials would be preferred, I guess. Sure. Over, over yeah, I would. deposits and man-made stuff. Yes, absolutely. I wouldn't. Would, I would probably default to just using granite for everything if that's acceptable. Yeah. Um, are you looking to see like a plan, plan level sketch, or what we're talking about with some notes? Maybe is that? I think so. Adequate? Yeah, that was that was sort of like I just yeah. want to make sure that I clearly understand where you're looking to come in. Sure. How you're looking to turn? If you're looking to put a fence up as a retaining. Sure. Uh, for the existing stone wall, what kind of a fence would you be putting up? Yeah. Uh, would you be putting yeah. on a, a, a small gate on that fence and so on and so forth? So sure. would that be a separate certificate application? Is, is that yeah, the th that was sort of like what I was looking at so that uh -huh. the two of them didn't necessarily... Um, Hold each other up. We're ho holding each other up, exactly. Okay. Um, sure. I, th I, th I think it sounds like you have it a really good plan of what you have in sure. mind, and it sounds um, like something that, that would definitely work with the property and everything else. Sure. Um, but just so that yeah, you weren't putting anything up and then no problem. later on we were looking at it and go, that was not the right fence, or it would be nice that the fence maybe tie back to the railings that uh, you're proposing to change on the entranceways and so on and so forth. Okay. And so to that end, uh, what... I mean, I, again, I'm happy to just put in what you guys would prefer. So I'll, I'll do this this week and submit it under another application. That's totally fine. But what, what, should, I, what should I put for hedges? What, what, are you, what is preferred? The, the, the plant material is not anything that we review. It okay. is only the hardscape. Okay. So I think what we'd be looking for would be a site plan okay. showing the, the new driveway. Yep. And um, also any additional, whether you're going to, uh, be putting in a new walkway, um, okay. walls, maybe, fences, walls, fences, okay. anything that will be visible from the public way. Okay. But like you said, I think that fence as you bring or that wall as you bring it around in front of the house. Yeah. I think it'd be very difficult to see from the public way. So. Um, yeah, th that's definitely not. I don't think you can see, but you will see what I would intend, what I, I'm intending to do in the way of like having the driveway there and then having kind of a drive, a thing you can drive in front of the house on, you would absolutely be able to see that. And then the other, you know, the other side of the, on uh, the other side as well. So, so is, is pavement allowed, asphalt pavement? Yes. So if I put that and then I was going to have like a, there were some old stone steps in the back, granite steps as like an apron in front of the driveway on the, on my side of the sidewalk and then or what about cobblestones as an apron at the other at the other edge? Things like that. Yep. Acceptable. Okay. I think if you provide some photographs of other applications that say, well, this is okay. here's where it's going to be in the plan. Yeah. Here's what we want it to look. Sure. Like. Yeah. No sweat. And then in the way of fencing, what kind of materials are allowed there? Just wood. Just okay. Painted or un does it does it matter? Um. Your trim is what white now? It's tr It's white. Yeah. Yeah. So. Just, just white or natural. Okay. Have and natural. Um, it, anything, it should have um, either a top rail or pickets that are not pointy pickets. Okay. So whatever. Sure. 
got some metal, um, a metal barrier on the left side of the house. Is that going to stay? That it kind of protects the overhang. Yeah, I hadn't intended to. I hadn't given that much thought yet, um, but I could remove that if it's, if it's preferred. Well, it's pr it's probably a, probably put in for code before. Right. So it's you got a you got a significant drop off there. So yeah. Oh, without question. I, I mean. Things like that can stay, but if you want to do something different, just make sure it's code, yes. code and. Absolutely, I had intended to leave it for now and then maybe get to it down the road a bit. Yeah. Yep. That's fine. I wonder if you can use that as a frame to apply almost like fence sections that correspond yeah. to the other fences and Potentially. I mean, I was definitely going to paint it whatever, like white or <clears throat> whatever the other railing would be or black to make mm -hmm. it try and disappear or dress it up. but. I knew it had to be dealt with. I just didn't know if it would be in this phase. So I've got another question in regard to the roof. I know you're proposing a cedar roof, which is great, although that can be certainly costly. Sure. Um, you know, I think we've approved asphalt before. Um, I, if the commission is 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 for it. Maybe there could be approval for either because if you get into it and you realize, wow, this is maybe something that we're not going to sure. move forward with, at least then maybe there's the option to do um, an asphalt roof. Maybe. I'm I'm happy to to incur that expense as long as it, you know it's good with everybody. That's fine. Do you want to run the? Idea yeah, I was actually thinking would. I mean, I I don't. This is just an off the cuff thing. I was thinking of standing seam copper just to dress the roof up a little bit more on the gable only. Would that ever be considered? On this one? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Oh, right. This, uh, just because the facade, uh, just an, it was just an idea. I'm indifferent to it. I figured I'd have copper valleys if, valleys if I had the wood roof. I'd keep it simple. Okay. Especially if you have the wood. Okay. Roof with the copper valleys. I think that's a that's good, good combination. Okay, that's, that's nice looking enough. Yeah. Okay. There's a thin asphalt up there now, right? Yes, three tab. It's old. Yeah. He, some of those architectural shingles are um, are pretty thick. Sure. That you can. They almost look like cedar. They do. So would you guys prefer the asphalt? I mean, I'm. No, no choice. It's just I'm happy with option it. When it comes yeah. out to cost. I'm, I'm happy with it. Yeah, I really, I appreciate it. It just don't last as long in every yeah. yeah, yeah. There are some very thick cedar shingles you can yeah. get, and those paper saws. Those, those are those are handsome. Those are last forty years. Those are beautiful. Yeah. Mine lasted eight. Um, I have a question. Go ahead. On um, John, on elevation A two point one, the front, you've got uh, two windows there. Is that a tight mole? Over here? Yeah, or is there a mole post in there? Um, the intent is to have a mole post in okay. there. Yeah, it's, right. not it's not going to be factory mold. Right. I know the drawing shows it that way, but the intent was to have like a four inch um, trim piece in okay. there. Okay, great. Make that correct. John, could you, uh, could you submit um, to us the, the windows that you're going to keep and just where they're going to be designated on the house where you figure it figure sure. out it's going to be you could I mean that could come in at a later time I think you know once you figure out which ones are sure yeah we can code them accordingly it's kind of the revision of <coughs> yeah is that okay with everyone mm -hmm. yes I had a question about the, the front door <laughs> the upper level front door is that is there a reason you're Swapping that out with the new one, or no, there isn't. Um, I'd be happy to leave the existing if that's preferred. It's a fine door, you know. It's in fine shape. It could be. It probably needs a paint job, and you know, but it works. So if that's preferred to be left. I, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. I know what your thoughts are. I think it's a nice fan light, you know, mm -hmm. sort of indicative of the, the period. Yeah, works for me. You repaint it. Yeah, absolutely. Right color. Yep. What about gutters? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm planning on putting gutters back. I, I don't know. Um, I don't have a preference there. I could do, I could do copper or aluminum or whatever. Is there preference? I prefer not to do wood if that's yeah. possible. Yeah, I mean, we've done standard aluminum. Would, would copper problems. work? Would copper be acceptable? Okay. The fiberglass. Or the fiberglass, yeah. Those are costly too, but the copper is too. And the lead coated uh, copper, was it that we saw? I can't remember the address. That was a beautiful gutter material. That was Heidi, right? That was Heidi. Oh, that's right. Uh, six the Clark Victorian. Road. Yes, it was a Victorian house, and these gutters were very substantial with very high volume capacity. Sure. And they looked, and they had a nice sort of uh, matte finish, and they're paintable if you wanted to paint. Sure. Them. The, the profile is to mimic uh, wood gutter. Okay, but, you but get, with the much but you get greater the volume. volume. Okay. Yeah, I'd be happy to do those. Something to consider. Actually. Sure. You can also use aluminum. So, thank you. So, your it looks like your window schedules calls for the simulated divided light. That you have a combination. Um, Intending for basically everything to be simulated, divided light, maybe except the front windows, depending on your feedback. That's why we named those 1A. That's, that's something that we want to bring up. You know, can we use the way it's labeled on the window schedule is true divided light for the 1A type right now. Um, everything else is a Marvin Wood simulated divided light on the sides and on the back of the house. Uh, but if, if the commission feels like we could also use simulated divided light in the front, we can just convert those to type, type 1 or type 2 instead of 1A and 2A. But that's the way it's designated right now on the schedule. I mean, typically on existing structures, um, we approve um, true divided light as opposed to simulated. Yeah, that's, that's why we, well, we showed it on the front, but if you want that on the sides as well. Yeah. Um. yeah. Well, you know, if we could have true divided light, why not? I mean, <laughs> sure. <thanks. laughs> sure. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with that as well. So we basically convert the uh, piece to 1A, actually all of these to 1A. And maybe one facade is going to be the repaired windows anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the replacement windows. So it's, these four windows would be converted to 1A to be consistent with the... Yeah, fine. And maybe the back facade could remain. Since Simulated. it's not visible from the street. It's simulated. In Simulated by the lights, yeah. Are you going to do sterling silver for the doorknobs? <laughs> <laughs> Just the front door that I'm keeping now. So just real quickly, in regard to the back, if, if I was under the impression that the back didn't matter as much, so if I was to make variations to this plan, would that be OK? Yeah, I, I think on the rear, it's just the building department may, yeah. Yeah. may want okay. an update. Fair enough. Uh, house colors? Is that working there? On We're working on that. Yep. <clears throat> Any um, light fixtures? I think oh, Mike, structure. I think we were working on that as well. Mm -hmm. So if I go with with copper gutters and would 
copper light fixtures be okay? Is that something we could look into and propose? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a material. I'll submit the cut sheet when you find the sure. style. I have some old ones actually. We'll bring in and nice. try it. What else? Anything else? <clears throat> I think we have enough there to get uh, get Jim started. I think so. Do some submissions on some updates. We can call out terms of conditions um, in the motion yep. of the changes that we're requiring, and then he can just submit the uh, the updates um, to, to the drawings. That would be satisfactory. Yep. Okay. And then any other additional um, cut sheets that, uh, that were we spell out in the motion, he can supply those too. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, for a certificate of appropriateness to 317 Main Street uh, for modifications uh, to the exterior as submitted um, in documents dated uh, April 26, 2018, uh, with the following comments um, and conditions. Um, Roof to be um, new roof is to be cedar. Um, <coughs> trim uh, will be replaced or repaired um, in kind. All trim uh, to be painted wood. Uh, any new trim details to match existing. Um, two over two existing windows to be um, reused where possible on either the side or the rear elevation. Um, siding to be painted wood clapboards. Um, ganged window on the front elevation um, to have a uh, four inch mold post. Um, gutters are to be copper. Uh, windows are to be wood, true divided light on the front and side. Um, Simulated divided light allowed on the rear. Uh, colors are to be determined at a later date. Uh, light fixtures to be submitted at a later date. Um, drawings uh, to be revised and resubmitted for record. Um, and a hardscape plan um, to be submitted for review and approval. And Separate saving the front door. Oh, yeah. um, right. Existing front door to remain. Um, Schedule for... Go ahead. One question. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about the new cedar roof. Shall I say that uh, asphalt is optional? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Similarly with the gutters, okay. uh, aluminum as an option. Uh, window schedule to include um, placement of reused windows. Anything else? Forget anything? Good? Okay, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thank you very much for your time. Excellent work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us out. Thank you very much. So Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recuse myself. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Next up, 699 Main Street. Uh, John is also going to uh, run us through 
some of the changes to uh, the rear of the building, uh, including an addition. <coughs> I believe there's some, probably some demolition work to be done here with this project, too. Uh, yeah, very, very minor. But, uh, yeah. sh should I wait for uh, Thomas, or sh should I? He, he, no, he recused himself. Oh, he did. I'm sorry. I missed that. Sorry about that. Uh, this yeah, was so his we'll house. What's that? He lived here before me. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. yeah he's got very strong views on this. <laughs> <right. laughs> um, I'm going to submit some additional drawings that I brought uh, based on my conversation with Andrea, just to better visualize the um, proposed change as to what part of it is really visible from Main Street, um, because most of the work is behind the house, what we're proposing to do. Um, you got, some of you may have seen this house before. Uh, 699 Main Street. Uh, basically, we're not changing anything with the original two-story portion of the front house. And in fact, we're not really changing anything um, substantial about the addition that was put on a few years ago. Uh, what we're proposing to do is completely off the back side, but as part of some of the changes we're doing there with that small four-foot expansion towards the back, some of the side view of that is visible, which is what that rendering is um, attempting to show you as to how, how little it is, uh, how little is visible really from, from Main Street on this particular side. Uh, there's an existing cantilever portion of the rear house over there, and that cantilever stays. And all we're proposing to do is to raise the, this eave line up to align with the, this middle eave over here, and I'll, I'll show you the elevations as well. Uh, and then make some window uh, relocations and some additional windows on the first floor. Uh, but let me go into the floor plans. <coughs> um, again, the existing floor plans. Um, sorry. Here's the existing first floor showing the historic house, the family room addition that was put on, kitchen and this existing uh, powder, laundry, and mudroom area. And this is the area that we're really improving on the first floor. And what we're pr proposing to do is essentially make the powder room a little smaller and expand this room four feet towards the back and also encapsulate the bulkhead in an interesting way that makes it an enclosure. So instead of a bulkhead with metal doors on the ground, you would have a full height building and closing those stairs and you have a regular door from the backyard stepping in. Uh, none, of that, it, none of the backside is visible, but I just want to mention that some of the ideas that drove this project on the first floor. Um, and then this becomes a small sitting room, sunroom type of space, grouped windows facing the back, and then the two windows that were shown in the rendering way back on the first floor are these two windows right here type one windows. And above this would be uh, in a renovation of the existing master suite uh, to create a more spacious master bath and walk-in closets. Um, and other than that, the function of this area is really remaining the same. Uh, a couple of window relocations on this side. Uh, the other component of the project that's really not going to be visible, but we do think it's an improvement, is um, eliminate this existing uh, flat roof, I'll go to the existing second floor plan so you can see the two together. <coughs> so this is the existing second floor plan and these are two building enclosures with a flat roof in between in this leftover area and it's been causing a lot of issues with water and snow gathering there and we, we really, part of the reason for doing this project is to encapsulate that space as much as possible and turn it into interior space and eliminate, basically eliminate the flat roof completely, which is what we're doing. So we are enclosing that area up to here. We can't go past this line because there's a really nice ceiling fixture downstairs, a ceiling shape, a barrel wall ceiling. Uh, so we can't proceed further. But that's a good thing because it actually makes this even less visible from anywhere, really. Uh, so this area really remains the same, except that instead of the parapet wall, I'll go back to the picture. So you can see the little parapet wall over here. You will see a roof eave and a small roof, small shed roof going from the new eave up to the base of the new um, bathroom we're adding over here. 
Another elevation view of what I was just talking about is, um, again, this interstitial space that's existing right now with a parapet wall, flat roof beyond. We're basically filling that in, creating a small shed roof, and creating um, a wall plane that comes a little further towards the driveway. And then, uh, once again, side-by-side -side views of the what we're proposing to do on the right side of the house, existing and proposed. Um, just showing the, uh, the fact that we're not changing really anything significant back here other than some introducing some new windows that are compatible with the existing two over ones um, and then relocating a couple of them. Uh, one other thing to consider as part of this review is the fact that as we enlarge this piece we are increasing this ridge line but that ridge line is completely behind the existing house. But I do want to mention that because technically it's a slight roof line change, which I think actually may help things. Because the existing roof, as you see, is fairly flat and the, the E line dips down. We're basically leaving that middle portion where it is. And as part of the four foot expansion and the water <coughs> gable going towards the back, the ridge line of the addition pops up slightly above two foot eight inches. <coughs> But as seen in the rendering, basically not, <coughs> not visible from Main Street. So that, that ridge line will be behind the ridge line of the historic times. So that's essentially the project. Um, if you have any questions, I can go back over some of the things I mentioned. I know there are some detailed areas that may um, solicit some questions. Um, okay, I'll I'll, uh, I'll open it up. Start it. Um, yeah, I mean, John, you mentioned the um, the ridge height. That was the thing that that kind of stuck out for me when I took you know took my first look at this as a you know, forty thousand foot level. Um, you know, typically, you see kind of a you know a step down and progression as you mm -hmm. as you put the additions on over time years with these with these homes. Um, you can also view this as maybe uh, as a connector in the middle between the two the two masses. So right. it, it could potentially work if you if you think at it that way on, on those terms. Um, uh, but I was also thinking maybe um, a smaller you know, gable um, in that area on that view to kind of you know this yeah that would pick up on the the original part of the house too, maybe a smaller variation could work also. Um, so you wouldn't have to, you know, uh, it wouldn't be kind of a step up with the with the ridge height. You know, just a thought, it might not work for the space uh, so much, but, you know, um, it could also tie in the front, you know, the new to the old and, and, um, and offer some, uh, uh, you know, some symmetry between the front and the back, you know. Do you think that would, I mean, one reason why we didn't do that was we were, I think, worried about attracting too much attention. Okay. This area, I mean, what do you think about that in terms of just looking at this view and the only really pointy element that draws your eye is the main house? Yeah. Do you think introducing another one here that's similar but not quite the same, do you think there'll be like a tension between the two? Or yeah, I was just thinking of ways to get the ridge height down a little bit lower yeah. as an option. That, that's all. Um, you're right, I think it may draw some additional attention to that. Um, and, may, and maybe it would, you know, compound the issue. I, I, I don't know. It's hard to see without a drawing. But, mm -hmm. you know, just a thought. It's interesting that you thought about that too. And we, we were making sure throughout all these roof line changes that, you know, we were obviously less than the, the front house. Uh, and since this already starts so low here, it really is the only reason why this seems like a big number, but that's only because this was already pushed down so low as part of this cantilevered expansions that were done um, over the years that were added on kind of interesting ways. Yeah, that back one is very strange. It's very, t it's very tight in there from, uh, yeah. from a roof standpoint. It's probably like six feet when you're up against the wall on the roof line. Maybe less. Maybe five, six. Yeah. I mean, if we were starting from scratch, you know, on this back out, we would not steer you in this direction. Mm -hmm. You know, if we were, 
And then we're kind of trying to work with what's what's there now. Yeah. I know that's what you're trying to do. Do you think a dormer, um, a gable dormer feature could work here? Or do you think, again, it would be too, draw too much attention, almost like a cross gable feature, you know, leaving this cross, the gable going back, and then doing another gable coming out of it 90 degrees? Um, you know, perhaps. Uh, if, if you think of that middle section as a connector, mm -hmm. you can kind of get to where you, you are right now. I mean, that's how I've... You know, that's how I'm thinking about it, but I'm just, it would be great if it would just, it would step down just a tad or, or something else there, but maybe it's just, like I said, compounding the problem. And, and again, we're not looking at this house from the rear. That's not our, our charge. Right. Right. We're looking at it from the, from the side, and I don't, I don't know what this view looks like if you step out a little bit further on, on uh, Main Street, if you, can, if you can see back in there a little bit more or not, I don't know, but. I don't believe so. I, I left it today and you yeah. really have to, yeah. really have to stop and pay a lot of attention to look and see back that far. Right. I don't know why they did it the way they did, but that like garrison feature is, that's been tough to deal with. It's like tough from a water perspective. It's tough from like a ceiling height perspective. It's yep. definitely the last thing they added on. I mean, I mean, John, this is minimal. This is a minimal, yeah. um, you know, adjustments that you're making here, um, other than just that ridge height. That's, I mean, it, this this facade here is pretty much it's staying the same. Yeah, it's just a, it's just that ridge. That's all. And again, we probably don't have a great um, view of that from the street, from that side, anyways. <coughs> What you have is <clears throat> is modest. I think based on what you're trying to do, I think it's pretty simple. I mean, I agree with the step down, but I think Hans's point of the connector. I mean, it, I, I think it works, and you know, I don't know that you see much of it anyway. Plus, the house is pretty set back anyway, so. Right. Well, you guys are um, just thinking about this. I just want to go through a couple items on the worksheet um, in terms of our evaluation. Um, and maybe that will help us kind of think about this. Um, you know, is the pro proposed addition placed so that will minimize visual impact on the historic structure? I think, um, I think what John's trying to draw here is, is in keeping with that question. Um, is it is it in, uh, in keeping with the streetscape, and is the addition over 50% larger in the square feet than the existing historic building? We'll certainly know this is a small addition. And if you believe this is a minor modification, I think those those two questions hold true. From a scale standpoint, or are there any um, any thoughts there that? Is this compatible with the historic building? Or does it overpower? I think it kind of, I think it meets those two, correct? Right. Massing doesn't seem to be a, a significant change here in terms of massing, right? Mm -hmm. Volume is change is small. Yeah, so the only, you know, the issue I was pointing out with John was on the height part of it in terms of our review criteria is the height of the new addition subservient to that of the existing historic building um, and is the height of the new addition compatible with other historic buildings in the streetscape that was for me that was what I was trying to just get comfortable with um, answering that question um, is, the, is the original historic building considered to be the first one here right so it would it still be subservient to the original structure? Yes. That, uh, yeah, I mean, I, and if you think of it as a connector between yeah. the two, then, yeah, and the, and if you yeah, think the of 
how visible it is from the streetscape that right. further mitigates the con any concern. And I believe the ridge height even is, is lower than the main house by a couple feet, right? I'm just it is, yeah. eyeballing it. At least at least one and a half to three feet. Um, design on the design side is the design of the uh, addition architecturally compatible with the existing historic building and with the surrounding buildings that contribute to the overall character of the district. Find that it's compatible, at least I did. Um, does the addition connect the primary historic building to an outbuilding that was historically separate? No. And, and just you know, thinking about the proportion, does the design of the addition create a harmon harmonious whole when added to the historic building? Are the void solid relationships of the addition compatible with the historic building? Your thoughts there? You think we're we're okay? I think so. I was just looking at the um, the proportion. Okay. So, proportionally, does it work? John, question. Yeah. Yeah. If I could. No, yeah, please. Uh, going through the steps of construction, so that that existing roof in the back there of that that the garrison portion that would be taken off completely. And you're gonna you're gonna basically lift the plate. Mm -hmm. This roof here. Yeah, that yes. roof would disappear. You'd start yes. over. Yes. And so that, that outside wall, outside walls, would all have to get raised. Correct. This, this to get to bring the plate up. Eve height would align with the connector Eve. And then obviously reframe, reframe the roof. Was it ever discussed eliminating this garrison overhang? On the side? Yes. Was it ever studied? We, I think in an effort to keep this a minimal project it wasn't okay but yeah because there's well we're eliminating one of the gar there are two garrison conditions there's one also going towards the back which we are eliminating since we're expanding that whole side but yeah towards the back but uh, the side one again we we're trying to minimize the impact between existing and proposed and there didn't seem to be a strong reason to expand the foundation there or and we didn't want to pull it in and lose space either on the second floor in the right. bedroom? Yeah, one, um, yeah. We would have expanded the first floor, and we weren't sure if that was a worthwhile effort. You know, John, thinking about my suggestion with the gable, if we were going to do that, you'd have to bump out that hole. You'd have to change the footprint, I think, on the, on the first floor, bump it out, maybe, to make that work. Right, we'll pull the second floor in and lose the... And you would not just put a gable on top of that, that type of... Uh, you know, the, the way the second floor is designed. I see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe there could have been a way to detail it. So it looks like a eave, but uh, like you'd a have, cantilever. Nice. You'd have to pull the first floor out, I think. Yeah, to make it look right. And then have the windows correspond to the symmetry of the gable. Which would be another challenge to make sure that something is centered or e equally distributed on the... Have you considered just um, continuing the roof ridge of the new addition back to the, new, <laughs> the old house to kind of simplify that diagram? Straight line. Yeah. I think, but there I think two aspects of that. One again is minimizing changes proposed in general. Yeah. If we're not touching this area floor plan wise too much, other than reconfiguring it, we try to focus the project mainly here. And I think. I mean, I think that connector aspect actually is, is an interesting way to look at it, have a little bit of an up and down. Instead of taking the, um, the straight connector and raising the whole thing up, I wonder if that would have made it a little more relentless from roofline perspective. Yeah, 
I just the original diagram is very simple and it really puts a focus on the, the historic building and then to add that additional height kind of although it will be minimized when you're on the street you can't it won't be really visible so yeah it's hard it's hard to tell just from the elevation but I think if, if this project involved more of this area I think we would have definitely gone in that direction mm -hmm. um, but it was just an effort to kind of focus it onto the to the rear and make it less visible. And you're going to put some new windows in, correct? Yes. Uh, we're putting um, their label and showing the window schedule. <coughs> Showing simulated divided lights for the two. Well, I guess it, it's, it depends on how you view it. Uh, I know the existing windows, they're a combination of uh, um, the ones we've taken out. Actually, we're not really taking out, we're introducing new windows. We would match them, uh, or the plan would be to match them to the ones we put in uh, in the existing edition. Um, you can see in the original elevation on the the side here at the bottom, no, down even further. Bottom right, uh, no, further down even. Oh, sorry. No, even further mm -hmm. down. <laughs> no, the one on the floor. <laughs> um, where you can see the, the, the small cottage addition, those two large windows there, we would match the construction of those windows that we, we had approved last time. They're Marvin Ultimates, I think they're true divided light windows. So all these all these windows are going to be true divided light. Yeah, so they're going to match exactly what we've already what our, we've already put in. I don't have the specs at hand, but they were the ones we proposed last time and have existing. So on the window schedule, they're noted as simulated divided lights, but we can make that correction to make them true divided lights. Yeah, the window schedule is simu all simulated. Yeah. Um, the, um, the existing windows on 2.2, number number two, are those, um, what's there now? Are those, um, are those old or those, um, are the, were those replaced recently? Those are replacements. The one on the bottom right is a replacement. The one on the bottom left is existing. The two above it on the garrison portion are, are replacements. To the left of the garrison, those those ones are um, those are existing, uh, and those are um, you're not replacing those. Uh, we are relocating, removing them okay. to work with the new master bedroom. Okay, um, so you're going to reuse those. That was the idea, and then okay. I think the reason why we showed the simulated divided light was because these had already been replaced. But if you think that true divided light is the way to go, then we can make these uh, the new ones going in on this side true divided light. Is there any simulated divided light on that facade now? I'd have to look at the, the two existing windows in the in the garrison portion, whether they're simulated or true. I, I can't tell offhand because they're, I just, I just can't recall. Okay. The rest, rest of that, that's, that side is true divided light though, right? Uh, the historic side, yeah. Okay. on that balcony. I don't think you can see it, but is that going to be all wood? That's the intent, yeah. Wood trim and uh, wood railing. This can continue the language towards the back, but as you said, in the back. Mm -hmm. And the roof you're going to um, match, match the uh, existing. Is it asphalt back there? It's all asphalt. Yeah. Okay. Well, the architectural asphalt. Okay. 
What other questions should I be asking? Would you consider getting rid of the garrison? Yeah, if I could get it approved both ways and I wasn't going to drive construction costs by 40%, yeah, I'd love to get rid of it. I hate the look of it. It's a disaster. <laughs> uh, <so> that's the, <laughs> the, 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 whole, that? the whole back of the... <laughs> The whole back look of that one area is really tough to deal with. So we're solving three quarters of it with, with what is proposed. But based on builder feedback, if, if we could change it, I would certainly prefer to. Because we don't need the space. It's going to be bathroom space. Oh, it's, it's eight inches either. Are you okay way. with pulling that in? I would be. Okay. It's because it's like six, eight inches. And it's a big bathroom as it is. So it, it sounds like the builder is talking about adding just to plate height, leaving the exterior wall. Mechanic will stay in the wall. Okay. You'd have to change the uh, the pitch a little bit on the roof. You'd actually probably roof lower the pitch, right? You'd actually lower the pitch by a function of reducing the right. cable width. I mean, lower the ridge height. Slightly. Yeah, all things being equal. Same, same pitch, it would just... The ridge height would drop a little bit. Yep. Yep. Um, would you guys want to see that drawn out if, um, if they were going to go in that direction, or just leave leave leave, the, leave them with the flexibility? It's not, it's not necessary for me, um, given given where it is in the house. So it's far back from the street. I think it should be submitted for record, though, if you do decide to go in that direction. Whatever the decision is. Yeah. Talk to the builder. If we can get it within within reason, I, that would be my preference. So that um, would just be one continuous eave? Is, that, is how it would be if you were to do that? That's what it would be, yeah. And then we, we would just have to look at this this break of the two slopes. Maybe we configure some of how these slopes come together as part of that change. Because it would be nice to keep this uh, coplanar. If the walls are going to be coplanar, yeah. then we wouldn't want to see that split in the roof slopes. So, okay. but we can coordinate that. You know, if that's the direction we end up going, we can coordinate all the way around and just make sure all these um, roof systems are. Anything else? Are we missing anything? Yeah. <clears throat> you want to make a motion, Ben? Sure. I'd like to make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for 699 Main Street. Uh, drawings dated April 13th, 2018. Specifics um, A two point two uh, the the rear garrison roof gets um, raised the ridge line raised um, asphalt shingles to match uh, wood trim to match. The, um, the the window schedule, did we say it was going to be true divided light? Yes, we were going to correct uh, the, the side windows. These Can it be to match windows. existing? Yeah, to, ma to match the existing. I'm not 100% confident right, that, it's right. not, that, it's, that they're not. They look like true window divided light. Window schedule to be corrected. Okay, so window schedule to be corrected to match existing windows approved at an earlier. Yes. And we can submit that for the record, too. Right. Okay. Um, what am I missing? Garrison pushed. 
Oh, as an option. Yeah. All right. So as as an option on uh, the elevation would be the right side elevation, uh, losing the garrison. So the overhang becomes coplanar. Applicant to submit drawings if um, if the garrison second floor is removed. But they right. should feel that they have approval to. to yeah, take they that. wouldn't require a meeting. That, those for would record. be yeah a submission for, for record. record, so that you can keep going. Yeah, that would be great. Um, uh, not changing the color. <laughs> nope. And then and then the rest is not. So we need it from a street. So from the public way. You guys okay with this demo? Um, so do you want to see an additional demo to this? No. Do you want to see some photographs on the side showing what this was? I think we have them for the for the record. Okay. No, yeah, on the on the left hand elevation. I don't know if that's visible from the street. That parapet. It looks like it's recessed. So. It's, yeah, it's between the two, it the is, main yeah. house and the right. uh, and the addition. It's set back about two but feet. Those are those are improvements anyway. What you're doing there. Okay. Um, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thanks all so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Good work. Thank you very much. Hey. One and done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry, calling you. I'm not expressing my uh, gratitude for <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Have a nice weekend, guys. Yeah. 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 All right, any other, any other business? Oh, no, I just wanted to make an addendum to my previous announcement. Um, I uh, did not say that the Battle of Grape Island event is a is the product of a coordination between the historical commission the historical society um, the uh, veterans services and um, harbor development so just want to give credit that's it that's all I have to say Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night. Any other uh, any other comments? Good. Okay. I move that we adjourn the meeting this evening. Historic District Commission. We have a second. Second. All right. In favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Thank you. Nine o'clock. Good work. I know. Good job, guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was guessing that was going to go well. I do have a couple.